Toilet, toilet, toilet. So they tell me the toilet's in here. Where's the light switch, anyone? Hello? Obviously, I need to find the throne to sit on it. Can someone tell me where the light switch is, please? Because if you don't and I haven't got any toilet roll paper in it, you're going to need some air freshener and I'm going to need a new change of pants. Know what I mean? Hello? Oh, 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 oh. Give me a shout, will you please? Hey, don't mind. Give me a minute, Jeff. Alright, here's what you've got. I'll tell you what I want. One of them pointing out all three of them. I'll let them all three out. What do you want, my love? I'll tell you what I want. I'm really, really, I want to. No, I want your pizza, sausages. You can have a bit of our fat sausages. I'll give you one there. Ah, <laughs> oh, good morning, James Burton. Why, Mark? I haven't seen you since you were this high. Oh, what's wrong with you today? Could do a bit of cash if we're being honest, mate. Well, uh, in God we trust. But in this case, in God we trust. <laughs> there you are. Treat yourselves to a fish supper. Good day, oh. gentlemen. Well, Jerry, how long till our chips are ready? Oh, I reckon about 10 minutes, my love. Right, OK, OK. I suppose we can wait that long, can't we? Yeah, we'll wait, right, we'll wait. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, that's it, mate. Oh, 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 bollocks. Who's that lovely bit of skirt you've got working behind that counter there? Oh, she's nervous, Lorna. Lorna? Oh, oh, she's lovely. That's just Lorna, is it? Oh, well, yeah, some people call her that. Surely, I mean, she's suit you, but. I tell you what, it's worth waiting ten minutes for the chip down, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it certainly is, my friend. Oh, people say that. Hello, Rev, how are you? I'm good. Oh. All the better for seeing you. Afternoon, what can I get you? You start by the fucking chip. We've only just opened, there's no fucking room right now. Get fucking, right fucking bomb bollocks, not even fucking safe then. Hold on, mate, you're getting in the way of my fucking chick. You see who's got the fucking gun, silly bollocks? Do you think that's why he's me? Do you want some? No, I fucking do. Enjoy that. Go on, have a go. Oh, that's a real sausage there. Look at that. Don't, don't ever get in the way of my chick today. You want some? You order your own. Yeah, yes, you are, dear. Don't go in telly, that's the way. That will save you for getting in the way of my chips, all right? Yeah. You want some? Yeah. Have it, good, have it. Well, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. <laughs> Naughty boy. 
They're not in their van, and I don't know where they've gone, but look, the van's empty. So, uh, I think, I think they've gone into this house here. I think, I think, I think they're in here. It's time for On The Job. Where hey. we come at you, we have a look at what you got, then we clear the lot. Yeah, so again, what's wrong with this dark outside? And, uh, it's a sad evening and it's getting bloody late to be honest. Uh, we've had a long day. Uh, Ginge, be careful with that son because we've got to look after. Uh, yeah, we've got to move some furniture from this house to another house and uh, what we're going to do is, uh, as, we, as we usually do, take proud care and uh, move it with, you know, the way we do on, on a job. screws, it'll be all right. Oh, I'm sorry, the door we just unscrewed that to pull it off there. Right. We just moved this round here a bit and it brought this Yeah, I'll unscrew that. Right. Put that right. right. Yeah. Now, if we can. Uh, oh, Paul Daniel's waiting. What's that, son? You can do it, put your back into it. You can do it if you put your ass into it, not this. Right, okay. Yeah. Look at him. Oh, you want that? I've got tons of packets. Have you got these packets on these already? Yeah, Oh, Julie, it's an app. Look at that, what a pleasure. There he is, look, knocking a line out on the table there, look. <laughs> <See him? laughs> well, and we put this one sort of there for Lenny's bar, when I finally get around to it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Right, Jim. right, anyway, Julie, thanks for the custom. You take care, see you soon. Hey, Weenie, what about that big pile of rubbish? Uh, well, we've done what we had to do. We cleared the house. Why? Where'd you think you'd go? Quick, go! <laughs> oh, I don't know. No one ever lets me know when we're fucking queuing. No one ever lets me know when we're going live, are you? Live, even. They just pre-record the bloody hell. Right? What's that? Try looking at the camera. Why? Because there's a... All right, okay. Fucking say the piss out of me, you really do. Ah, you got your hand up my ass again, and you only want to think my mouth moves like a fucking puppet. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to this part of the show where we've, you and uh, me, Dickie Dickinson, uh, value some of you, the viewers, lovely artifacts from home. And um, we've got the stories behind them as well, because luckily me, the Duke, um, Basically know a lot of shit about history and of course antiques. I know how to make a quick bubble to and rip someone off, I'll tell you that now. How about a couple of Bobby Dazzle over the years? Anyway, what we got here, first of all, is a selection of burned dolls. That's burned dolls. Now, you may have seen like uh, the Fabergé eggs and these to fit inside the others, they're worth a lot of money. And then you get the dolls, the uh, Victorian dolls and stuff like that. Well, these ones are worth an absolute fortune. They're called burnt dolls. Now, you wouldn't believe that, would you? Now, let's start with uh, this one here. This, this is a little honey. And um, if you look at her, now she's lost uh, one foot completely, she's got a little sort of foot left, and both her hands are gone. Now, that's, she's the prime example of a burnt doll. She's not too bad, she's quite valuable. Now, we go to Trixie, well then again, it might be Trixie, it might be Bob, um, no, she's got shoes on. I, I don't fucking know, to be honest, because she's got no fucking head. It's basically burnt to a crisp, um, and she's got a hole in her ass there, not the one that the poo comes out of, of course. And she's lost quite a lot of herself, like, she's basically not herself anymore. So she's worth a few quid. Now, actually, we're going to the valuation of her now. This little doll here, if you're a bit naive, and um, let's face it, a bit dim up here, you could be paying up to a thousand pounds for this doll. So bear that in mind. Okay, if you're not that stupid up here and you're not that dim, it's not worth a wait, we know that. Uh, no, this, this one here. Uh, now, there's a real story goes with this one. Um, do you remember the, um, the, um, the Drayton, uh, I think it was, what was it? The Drayton, ah, uh, uh, yeah, the Drayton, the Drayton Chainsaw Massacre. Um, well, this doll belonged to one of the victims and um, it was loved and she was treasured. And uh, the actual, actually it wasn't victim, it was a bloody assailant. Yeah, this belongs to the bloke who done it. That was a chainsaw. He fell in love with her, and she was a great, great little bird. And uh, 
just to have a sort of dough. And what happened is, he started his chainsaw up one day, and a bit of wood come, and it smacked her in the eye. And of course, he made a big hole in her. He loved this doll. So what happened is, in that moment of disarray and shock, what's happened is, he decided to turn around to tell his nan what happened. As he turns around to his nan, he's got the chainsaw running. You can imagine what happened. Blood everywhere, cut her arm off. By this time, he's saying to her, why are you, you, why are you, not, why are you not bothered by what's happened to Dolly? Because she's got no fucking arms, well, he didn't know that at the time, so she couldn't do nothing. So at the time, her face experience was a bit shocked. So with that, he's gone to give his nan a bit of a cuddle, and the chainsaw's gone right through her gut. And with that, slip back, this is where the blood comes from, right over Trixie. He's turned back around and seen the state of his Trixie. Never mind nana on the floor bleeding to death, she's finished. He's seen the state of her. With that, it threw him into a fit of rage. That's when he went on the streets of West Drayton and uh, done that most un unthinkable thing of chopping his own legs off and his own arms. and. And he chip then just finished himself off. Basically, he couldn't do that because he had no fucking limbs to do it with, so the police had to do it for him. Uh, and, and this one here was her sister. And basically what happened here was um, she was with her the day this happened. And sadly, um, the dog grabbed all of this one. It's no story that goes with this one. It's just that Nana's dog fucking grabbed it, chewed it up, fell on the floor. Nana see it on the floor, dropped a cigar, and it fucking, because Nana used to smoke cigars, on there, and that's it, Coralite. So there you go. She's, not by doing too badly, like, right? you know, she's, uh, I was going to say, she would like to drink, she's legless, but we're a bit of an old screw the barrel, that one, isn't it? Eh, uh, right, full enough, same household. Not the killer's household, this is Nana's, well, obviously she's passed away, bless her, you've heard the, um, like, your story, what happened to her? Now, Nana used to, his Nana used to piss in us about three times a night, and believe me, that's a, that's a mean feat when you've got like a big fat ass about 30 stone and you're sitting on that or trying to wedge it under you. It's amazing it's still in this condition. It's got a few cracks and stuff like that, but Jesus, the crack that sat on it, now that was another story. Anyway, if we look underneath, it should give you a name. It's Arthur Wood. Arthur Wood. Now, not half a wood, because that's half a wood in male terms, but what shocks me is, it's Arthur Wood. So does that mean if we look at something that's carved the wood, it'll say Dave China on it, because it's the opposite, isn't it? So it really is a thing, and it's got a little yellow mark here. I don't know what that is, maybe it's a piss stain or something like that. But anyway, it was made by Arthur Wood in England. Who wouldn't? Uh, we can put that on the hat there. But anyway, it's good for a piss all day long. And when you're, you're looking in there, see, the colour of your piss, if you, you've got enough, uh, you know, you, you, you're just out of the colour of your piss to make sure you're all right, you haven't got anything with your kidneys, you've got these little flowers to look at as you go in there. And obviously Nana's left a bit of pothole, a little bit of pothole in there. Obviously she had a, a bit of a curry the night before on some case and she's really fired it out and it's broke the enamel around the flowers, just saying. But anyway, value-wise, after what this has been through, I would definitely value this at half a pint of piss. Without a doubt, half a pint of piss. That's me, Dick, Dickie Dickinson's valuation on this and of course the burnt door. So if you people out there, gullible as hell, got loads of money in your pockets, Get yourself a burnt doll now. They're worth a fortune. And for all us lucky people, they ain't worth a wank. Ah, once again, that's from me, Dickinson. Dick, oh, Dickie Dickinson, is it? Yeah, Dickie Dickinson. Ah, cheapest chip, Bobby Dazzler. And all that stuff. See you next time. It's unusual for someone to ask like, a member of the cast to help us do something on the job. But would you be able to give us a hand with this piano? No, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. These are beasts. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind. I've been. I put your shelves up for you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let me. Um. We need, we need more than that many. The box is really weak, I think. Um. Uh, have you ever have you ever lifted one of these before? No. He's a strong enough. Yeah, you're in for a surprise, looks, buddy. He looks strong enough. We'll have a go. I'm sure we'll be all right. Right, OK. Oh, uh, so right. we're now about to much. do a crucial move and put the piano down the pathway, down here, and then into, into the van. So we'll see how it goes. Now, like I said, yeah. pianos are certainly no, no easy thing to move. Wouldn't I? <laughs> you wouldn't want to run into that look down the dark alley, would you? Oh, ouch! Do you ever get those stressing <coughs> moments where you're dying to go to the toilet, but just unfortunately, your insides won't let you? <coughs> so, look no further, just like Wayne the Ancient at the beginning of the programme, he needs to take new active arse. That's active arse. One swig and you shit. Aimed and guaranteed every time. Don't let your stomach get in a twist. For only 2 dollars a bowl, get yourself some active arse right now. Like, 
Oh, my Barry, he sits by it. He don't swear by it, he sits by it. My God, it's good stuff, it really is. Oh, my Maud, she was going out with me for days. I kept stinking the bleeding kitchen out. After a drop of Axie bars, she fucking loves me. Not to be used when sitting on Nanny's new sofa, especially when it's white leather. Active bars, one swig and you shit guaranteed. Two professionals at work, as you can see. And here we see the lads, knowing the full knowledge of how to move a piano, very, very delicately, and most of all, always using the one move because they've done it so many times. After moving pianos time and time again, it's always the same, it's so simple, you just know exactly where to put it, where to place it, where to strap it, and it's done, as you can see the lads are doing now. It has recorded. It is still, yeah, because what, camera? yeah, because I'm not too um Jeff. Got to, um, <laughs> makeup, makeup. <laughs> right, the show okay. Once again, we've asked Jeff, the cameraman and producer of the show to come and help us lift the piano. And he's only willing to do so. And, and ladies and gents, this is Matt, the lovely man we're moving the piano for, who's never going to get another piano. And the lovely lady behind the camera is his lovely wife, Hazel, who Matt's probably going to throttle later about. <laughs> <laughs> right now, well, well, I'm uh, well, do I, Jeff, you turn it in with Matt and we'll be lifting some noise. Right, are you ready, Jim? Sure, what, are you ready, guys? Yeah. Here we go. Okay, nice and gentle. I don't know about you, I feel a song coming on, Jim. Stop the top, 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 stop the Delightful musical entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. Our very own Jim from On The Job is going to play chopsticks for your musical taste. Hit it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I'd say the piano's fine in tune, is it? Well, anyway, uh, so we get back to On The Job. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's massive. Right, before, before we go in, where are we going in? We are going through that door there. And which way are we going once we... Oh, right, OK. <laughs> Don't know what these dudes are sitting there doing, ain't never gonna get me in here in one of these. Well, <laughs> Right, let's go for it. We might need him on Good that luck, side. lads. <laughs> we might need him on that side. Okay, oh. Jeff, Jeff, come get his hand. Okay, okay. We've got enough room. You play it. We'll be Wayne Yates and the boys all. We'll see you next time on All the Job with Wayne Yates. Take care. Somebody has to